All right, now let's talk about Charles's law, right? So uh, Charles's law simply states uh, that the volume of any fixed mass of gas is directly proportional to the temperature provided that, you know, pressure remains constant, okay? Right, so in this case, what it simply means is that, you know, if you think about it, if I take an amount of gas, okay, let's say there I take, there are some molecules of gas, and these would be, let's say, at room temperature, okay? So they would occupy a specific amount of volume, right? So at low temperature, in this case, remember uh, that the molecules are moving in different directions, they are colliding with one another now and then, but they are also colliding with the walls of the container, right? But what happens the moment that I take the very same amount of gas, right? And I now uh, put some heat, okay? I'm going to, uh, you know, use this as, you know, a sign for putting some heat. I can't draw fire. <laughs> okay, right. So, in this case, if I now make this gas, um, you know, I increase the temperature, what happens? You'll see that if it's a closed container, right, the lid of the container, of course, assuming that the lid can be able to move, what happens? Now, the lid would kind of push backwards, right? Why? Because the higher the temperature, that's what this uh, law means, the higher the temperature, and by the way, temperature is used in Kelvin. We'll talk about that now. The higher the temperature, the higher the volume that that gas would want to occupy, right? So it means that the molecules now begin to knock against, you know, the lid and they say, hey, we need as much space as possible because uh, we want to move as freely as possible, right? So what happens when we increase temperature, right? So if temperature one, is greater than temperature two. So let's say this is temperature one and this is temperature two. Then it simply means that the volume two, uh, sorry, the uh, uh, volume, no, no, no. Actually, I meant to say uh, temperature two is greater than temperature one. Then it means in this case that uh, volume two would be greater than volume one. Okay, so the higher the temperature, the higher the volume. Now, ladies and gents, I want you to please listen carefully. So as a result, we can now say, if we take that law, right? So it means that the volume, now if we want to move from proportionality to an equal sign, we have to introduce a constant, right? So we say the volume of any fixed mass of gas, right? is equal to that constant multiplied by the temperature, okay? So now what we can do is that we can divide both sides by temperature, okay? And what do we have? So the volume of a gas divided by its temperature, right, is equal to a constant. And as a result, that is why, therefore, we can say, well, it means, remember, this is the same gas, right? At different temperature, at temperature one, at temperature two, but when we increase temperature, the same molecules in this case required a higher volume. So then we can say that the volume one over temperature one is equal to K, but also what it means is that volume two over temperature two is equal to the same constant. Okay, so as a result, that is why when we use, in this case, uh, Charles' law, in the, uh, we are going to say V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And remember, we said this is where pressure is constant. This is very important, right? So pressure would definitely have to be constant in that case. All right. Now, what we're going to do is I want us to apply some, um, you know, some, some uh, questions, you know, apply this principle in some questions. And of course, we'll un we, we will unpack the other 
uh, laws as we continue in another video, right? But for now, what I want us to do is to talk about uh, how to use this principle. Now, please, I want you to note that when we talk about temperature, we are talking about temperature in Kelvin. And what that means is that if you're given temperature in degrees Celsius, right, um, you just simply add 273, right? So the temperature in Kelvin will always be the temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273. Of course, if you want it to be more pedantic, it's 0.15, okay? But uh, we just simply use 273. All right, now we're going to take a few examples. All right, so let's have a look at this question together. So they say to us, calculate the decrease in temperature when six cubic decimeters of gas at 20 degrees, that was supposed to be Celsius, right, is decreased to four cubic decimeters, right? Now, of course, we're going to uh, apply. Now, of course, we're assuming that uh, this would be happening at constant pressure, right? Now, uh, we know that, of course, the volume of any you know, uh, amount of gas, constant mass of gas is directly proportional. So we're going to use Charles's law in this case, right? So what is our volume number one? So our volume number one, six cubic decimeters. Please just make it a point, ladies and gents, that when you're given volume, right, you don't necessarily need to, to convert to, you know, cubic decimeters uh, when you are using this, um, you know, the, the this law. But you just need to make sure that both of them are in the same units, right? So when they give you volume in cubic centimeters, the other one must also be in cubic centimeters, all right? And we'll talk about the conversion a little bit later uh, on how you convert from the one to the other. So we know that volume number one, that would be six cubic decimeter, and this would be temperature number one. However, remember that temperature must be in cubic, uh, I mean, in, in Kelvin, right? So let's first find that Kelvin temperature, right? So we're going to say, right, so what is our temperature in Kelvin? Okay, this is going to be the temperature in degrees Celsius, okay, plus 273. So this is going to give us 20 plus 273, and therefore this would be 293, right? So temperature number one, that would be 293. So this is going to be six divided by 293, which is equal to volume two. We said it would be four cubic decimeters. Those volumes are in the same units, right? Divided by temperature number two. So we wanted to find out what would be the uh, decrease in temperature? So we can now cross multiply, right? So we're going to say T2 multiplied by six, that's six T2 is equal to four times uh, 293. So that's four times uh, 293. Okay, that gives us 1172. And of course, we can divide both sides by six in order to uh, find that temperature T2. So in this case, we take that value and we divide that by six and it gives me a temperature of 195.33. Remember that temperature is in Kelvin. Of course, if they wanted you to express that temperature in degrees, right? All you do is just take this and subtract, uh, one, uh, I mean, 273, right? So you would say 195 minus 273, uh, and in this case, it would give you the uh, temperature in degrees Celsius. All right, so I hope that you understood that, ladies and gents, all right, and that it made sense. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the next, um, you know, of the laws. Uh, in this case, we're going to look at, um, you know, uh, uh, we've just looked at Charles's law in this case, right? We're going to be looking at Boyle's law next, all right? But for now, I will see you guys again next time. Shab shab.